My name is Psychic Reverend Donna Serafina. I would like to say that a retired detective from Idaho wrote me an email and said that I could not have described some of the areas there better if I had been driving up and down the street. And we talked on the phone for a couple hours after that. It was a very interesting conversation. Later, I emailed the detective and I said, well, if there were five or ten questions for law enforcement that might help with this case, would you mind just brainstorming for a minute? It doesn't have to be anything com complex. I was surprised to find out that he actually sent me back over 120 questions. Everything you hear on here is from the psychic viewpoint. You can kind of hear the difference because the audio that was playing was about with the questions was about five feet away from me. So it's a little quieter. And of course, it sounds like a question. And then I answer it while I'm in the psychic state. So I just also want to tell you that I have worked very, very hard since the death of my own daughter in 2011, my daughter, Nicole, who I dedicate all my work to. Everything that I have done since her death has been about moving my own soul forward, uh, my own connection with God, and really truly honoring my daughter by working on myself and my connection with God, with her, and with mankind. I have also spent thousands and thousands of dollars training with the world's top mediums, the world's strongest mediums. I've spent the last eight years, approximately four nights a week, engaged in active spiritualism. Most of it is from Christian-based spiritualism. And then one of the churches was the man was a Buddhist monk. So I have a wide variety of training. And for the last 38 years, I have actually been studying all the world religions, although I grew up in a Christian school and going to a Christian church and consider myself a Christian if I were to put a religion down. With that, I will just want to say, I, I'm, and I also want to say how this came about. What occurred in my house, and this has occurred before, is this is how the spirits bring me into a case. They want, they brought me this case. Let me tell you that they brought this case to me. And whether you believe it or not, this is true. So I was, went on to my computer, but I just caught eyes with her. And as soon as I did that, all of a sudden onto my right, there was, it feels like effervescent bubbles. And you could only imagine when you see champagne bubbles going up a cup from the inside of the glass, that was the feeling right next to me. And suddenly I could feel my own daughter, Nicole, as vividly as if she was standing right there, which she was, but just not in her body. Well, as soon as I, you know, oh, Nicole's here. Boom. Here comes Tylee. Tylee's right, right next to her. Tylee didn't come in with her. First, Nicole came in and then steps up Tylee Ryan. So I told her I would sit down and meditate and listen to her story. Well, when I did that, Tylee was not alone. Tylee was with this man who he just kept talking. But these two are a team. Let me tell you now, these two people... Tylee Ryan and her stepfather, Charles Vallo, who were known for butting heads in physical life. Let's just say in the physical world, Tylee and her father were known for butting heads. In the spirit world, these two are a team, <laughs> a very, very strong team of two very strong personalities, a very two strong spirit people. Tylee Ryan wants every single person out there to know what her mother did to her. So when you hear these graphic, and I'm having full body chills right now, by the way. Um, when you hear the graphic information on here, please know that Tylee Ryan wants you to know. She wants you to know what her mother did. 
the, they were brought to me. And I think some people have questioned about why I'm doing what I'm doing. And this is why I think it's important to put this in here. The other thing that I'd like people to know is I've spent well over 200 hours of my own time doing this. And I am going to set up a Patreon account prior to uploading this. And if you feel that this kind of work is valid, or if you feel that you would like me to be able to help other people who have unsolved murders, um, please donate some money to the Patreon account. I am a legally ordained reverend in California, and I would like very, very much to just be able to continue my work with this, but I also have done a major work helping grieving mothers. And after the death of my own daughter, I literally decided that I was going to devote the rest of my life to helping people who were grieving to know that, and especially parents, to know that those children still exist. They are in spirit. And a lot of people believe that, but it hurts real bad and they're just unsure. But to just so that they know, they know. And I have seen healing occur literally right in front of my eyes. Um, your loved ones are always there. So it's it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to serve God this way, to be able to serve spirit this way. And it it isn't, I do have to put a roof over my own head and put food in my own refrigerator. So I am asking for donations. I am. So please consider donating something to the Patreon account, the link will be on either on this video or it will be in the um, description box. Also, pre please like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel. All that kind of thing actually gives people more abilities on YouTube to spread the word even more. And with that, I'm going to go now into playing. Describe the material on the exterior of the cabin. Is it real logs? Fake logs? Like a faux front log cabin? Is it plywood? Brick? Or other material? I'm seeing brick. Um, not, not the actual structure, but brick flower Things where you plant bushes, flowers, right outside the cabin front door. I'm seeing dark brown. I feel like it was built probably, well, I shouldn't say a time period because I don't know, but when they still thought it was decorative, to kind of put these kind of little shutter looking things, trim things on the sides of windows. It's not really shutters, but they're like almost curved wood, cut in a, you know, curve, like they're thinking that's a decorative decorative to put it like that so they're not even pretend shutters but in a way they mimic that look i'm seeing dark brown in the yard i'm seeing some kind of a plaque like a wooden plaque with a fish on it i don't know if that's a trout to me, it looks like a rainbow trout. I don't know if they have those in Idaho, so if it's not that, it'd be something else. But, and yeah, I'm getting chills about that. I don't know if he's got some decoration hanging um, from maybe like a porch or a pole, or it, it, it looks like a wooden thing. It's, it would be like, it's like it says something about, and it's to do with a fish. And also, I don't know my fish, but that's why I just think it's a trout. But the kind of has like rainbow trout. Like, I don't know if it's that kind, but it has like more than one color, like along the body and then some spots. And, but it feels like a plaque, like if you had a dark wooden plaque. And it, I don't even feel like it's totally square. It's like if the corners were rounded out. The corners are rounded out, yep. And, um, you know, edged, the sides edged. And so this this is a thing that's kind of nice that was made. It might have his name is or something. We'll see. Anything or anywhere you can get an address. Look on the front of the house or cabin. 
Okay, so the first thing in it. If there's a mailbox, go to the mailbox and look for numbers. If there's not that, go in there and look for mail. When this and first you started. The also see if the mail has a name. And now I already forgot it. the number. I think you it was 987. That but that, I don't think that's it. Okay, this is what it is. There's mind garbage. And, and the closer you stay to the conscious state, there's mind garbage that floats in when you're trying to do... So this is going to have more mind garbage than normal. I know that. It's not going to be anywhere near the accuracy of going into a full trance. But it can still be done. The first number I thought came into my mind right at the very beginning was like 987. Um, I, I say everything because it could relate to something else or it could matter. But I'm also getting the four again. I'm getting four numbers, and I think four is the start one. It might be like four one eight seven, or let's just see though if, if we if she now gives us time. Oh, interior. okay, because yeah, because we don't need the address, right? We'll we'll get back to that. <laughs> just forget it. <laughs> okay, uh, do I see a loft? When you are inside the cabin. Is there anything recognizable? Do you see family photos that indicate that this is somebody's personal cabin? It feels like you walk in. To me, it feels like the 60s or 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s, one of these ages of cabins. Like, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, built yesterday or anything. I see things that look like they were built either in the 50s or the 60s. You know how they used to make the cupboards underneath As you are walking around curved or whatever. The cabin and describe what you see. I'm seeing a cupboard, you can <laughs> like a kitchen cupboard that's kind of a mapleish looking. Well, no, that's not the right color. It's that color from the 60s where it's it's not bleached wood like in the 80s. And just go into each but it's bedroom. it's like that yellow one, color of staining each and, and the handles are this like where it looks like you hammered um but probably not copper but brass or it, it, it it's not really brass it's just some brown metal or something but it looks has that hammered look you know so it'd be like little rumply um the cup the top cupboard doors right and, and so we're just gonna walk around I am seeing some personal type stuff um, in the living room that looks to have to do with nautical. So I think the person probably likes something about the ocean or fishing or sh something about water um, because I'm seeing like, like a decoration that's uh, um, like, you know, on the boats, the captains drive with that um, hand, that, that round wooden thing with all the handles on it. Um, but a, like a miniature decoration one that might only be like, you know, a foot wide, painted white. Um, so it's just like this nautical decoration right there I'm seeing. Um, I am seeing up again. I, I do think that's a moose head. Like I believe that's a moose head there. Um, but it could, you know, I'm seeing other animals. So what that tells me from spirit is I'm not supposed to insist that it's a moose head. Because it could be a deer head and it could be a caribou head. And I'm sorry, I do not know these animals, but I feel like there's a head on the wall. Which, of course, I know you could say from all cabins. I'm also seeing a plaid blanket. And I, the other time I saw this orange and brown plaid blanket. But right now I'm seeing a green plaid blanket. Um, the primary color being green in that. And like a forest green. I'm not sure where in the house that goes. I do have chills, so I know it's true. Um, I know I'm connected with it. The, the, this is a green um, a blanket that's plaid that has a primary green, um, forced green color. I don't know if they wrap tiling in it. I don't know. Just describe the entire kitchen. Okay, the kitchen I see is the same as the kitchen that Joe Ryan showed me, which is when you come in, there's a living room. Okay, there might be this place off to the left of the living room where you can eat, but it's separate down this little hall. Wherever you turn off where there's bedrooms or stairs, 
Um, yeah, um, okay, so then there's this little kitchen there, down there, and it seems narrow. Oh, so it's 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 a narrow kitchen. It's it's wide like the cabin, not all the way as wide as the cabin, but it, it's narrower. Okay, and what I see in there, it's the same thing. That high rise faucet, um, really distinct, is built into the counter. It's like the wavy part. And it's, you know, where if someone put dishes or anything else, the water would drain back into the sink. That's distinct. That's a non-negotiable part of this cabin. It has two little sink things that I see. Okay, or one sink divided into like two parts or whatever. What color <laughs> is the counter in this kitchen? It's a light-colored counter. <laughs> I have to feel like I have to yell that I didn't give myself enough time. I, you know, it, it, I would call it beige or white, the closest to with this little bit of marbling through it from like the 70s. Like if you had a little tiny bit of gold marbling or um, really thin, you barely see it. Does this refrigerator look like an older model or a newer model? It looks older to me. Actually, it looks like rounded. I mean, it looks like a really actually old refrigerator to me. Looks like it works. I see rounded. I see rounded. I mean, not even just new or old. I see like, almost like this, almost, you know how in the 50s or some crap. Like, I see a really old refrigerator, but it looks like it works. Anything around this kitchen that you are seeing? I'm seeing a more push for it to be a kind of yellowish gold tile. Um, I want to not say gold tile, but... You know, that, um, not mustardy, but not yellow, yellow, but you know, in that range, more of, uh, more of a duller, not something you're going to pop up in your face color, but if you're looking at it, it would have undertones of, um, really light gold, gold is yellow, but not, that's not the whole color of it. It's like a mix of color somehow. I'm not sure if there's lines and then little. Is there anything else about the cabin, the interior of the cabin that you can notice that you haven't been able to say yet? Yeah, I feel like they have this trim all over the place from the 50s. It could be the 60s, early 60s. But when they used to cut wood, how they'd cut like, little curve little curve little curve and then they they have it up as trim like it's a decoration i feel like it's like that you can look out of when you're inside that cabin is there any window that you can look out of and see water it feels like there is but i don't know for sure i'm just not deep enough to know for sure but it feels like there is but I wouldn't put it on a thing. I, I wouldn't. This is, I'm not deep enough to know. I'm not receiving it. I'm guessing. I'm feeling so that it is, but I don't if know. You go about this cabin, when you're standing on the property, what do you see of landmarks? Well, it sure feels like it's on the water to me. Well, it looks like a lake, but you know, maybe it is a super wide river. How would I know? It feels like it is, it just feels like there's water there. Now, if there is a detached garage or workshop, can you describe it? Is there more than one outbuilding or is there only one outbuilding or is there no outbuilding? Also, is there is an outbuilding or more than one, describe in relation to the cabin. I feel like you pull into the driveway and right on your left is this one outbuilding. And I'm not 100% sure if it was built ever as a garage or, or as a workshop. Um, I feel like you pull in and I feel like when I'm at this cabin it does seem like a small house in a way, but not the big house. 
I even felt like there might be a carport off to the right. If there's a fire pit, and the fire pit has concrete, like it has concrete around it, it's not like just a, a flat on the ground build your fire. There's a little, it's a, it's a round ring. Uh, not huge, but I mean like a foot high. Outside the cabin. What other outdoor features? I'm seeing, I am seeing a wood and lattice. So I'm seeing a four by four and I'm seeing lattice. And I don't know if that's some, because of some kind of deck thing. I'm not 100% sure. It's like I'm, maybe there is some kind of little porch, wooden porch thing. Or, yeah, I'm not sure though, because I'm not seeing the whole thing of it. What if it's decorations on on something? Um, I don't know, but it's a four by four piece of wood, definitely dark stained, and there's lattice. Look at the front of the cabin and describe every single thing you can see, even if you've already said it. Right away, I saw a star. I feel like that 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 flat concrete patio is at the front of the cabin, and I feel like trying to see these numbers. If there's a seven and an eight and a nine, three, nine, seven, eight. But then I saw that earlier, I saw four. So let's see, I'm not seeing it. It's, it's, it's really hard to see that. They have to form whatever they show you in a combination of what's in your mind and molecules. And numbers are just really hard, but we'll get it. Nine, I, I'm seeing eight, eight and a seven and a nine, but then, okay, now what I am seeing that I didn't see before was, say the cabin's made with plywood, but then same as that um, outhouse thing, they, they put these little trim pieces, like they think if they put these a foot apart and it's maybe like a one inch by two inch piece of wood or something, the, the whole strip. And, and then a, a foot later, they put one, another one, and they put another one, and it, it's, so it's like a decoration from the 60s or something. And maybe that's not technically exactly how they did it, but that's what it looks like to me right now. I'm just trying to talk fast because I didn't give myself enough time on these. Um, outside, so we're outside, and it feels like they made that s some more weird-looking trim stuff go about a foot or two high and they did the same thing with that only they maybe painted it a different color and it sticks out but it's like one like they put extra layer of plywood and then that and then the trim and then one little piece of trim board like a one inch by two at the top nailed of the of the little no, foot off the, the ground that plywood so it does that's stand what it feels like right now door and stand back and i got chills about that everything you see on the back of that cabin on the cabin in the back and around the cabin in the back well what seems weird to me is it feels like the back door it actually is off the side of the kitchen and it's a uh, kind of those kind of doors where they used to make the spring for the door to spring shut by itself um it might not be the Oh, oh, heavy part of the door, like if there's a, a screen door and a regular door, but the screen door would be like this kind with a wooden frame still that they made a spring and then that the, would kind of shut on its own. So like if kids ran in and out, it'd go blam and shut on its own every time, that kind. That seems pretty distinct there. To me, I'm seeing this kind of um, red color of on that screen door thing on that wooden frame on the screen door but it would be dull dull you know and not anything fresh or bright or new but just you know you know maybe someone 10 15 years now ago painted it the left side of the cabin color of the roof how many windows i'm seeing see? a deer and meadow deer meadows these things okay if not, I see what? deer meadows. Do you see a view? Do you see other cabins? I see a baby deer 
with you little spots on it. Happen. What do you see? E e eating grass in a little meadow with wildflowers. It's called Deer Meadows. Right there to the left. Ah. I'm a revolting. Okay, I see that same funny trim on the outside. And I do feel like, now I do feel like it's a two-story. I feel like it's slightly bigger than I thought when I was with Joe because I wasn't really looking at the whole thing. I, I, I'm more seeing the cabin from the very first time. And um, and it's it's not that it's a different cabin. It's just that I'm seeing the whole cabin. And I'm seeing that I feel like it does have a second story. I feel like it's made of this wood with this slats of trim and um so it doesn't look like a wo wo log cabin no and um uh, uh, but it's not the big fancy house ones but it, it could i mean i would i could live there year round probably well maybe not but and as you continue, what kind of trees are growing around that cabin i have to okay. say that i yes i do see large trees but I'm also seeing the water, and 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 it's like I go, oh no, that's too easy because uh, you know. But I do see water right there. I see the cabin here, and I see it slopes down, and I see water right there, right there, like on the water. And I see very large trees. Let's see what trees. I know the one is not. Awesome. I know the one is soft that is always white, wiping me when I'm in the trance when you were on the property of that cabin is there any water source visible such as a lake or a river and if so please describe i see do you see mucky muck there's a really muddy 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 mud flats place i feel and uh, a little, off to the right and then off to the left is, is more of a lakish. Um, I feel again that I saw, okay, there's a specific shape. And I've found a few lakes that have this shape where it's like there's like two sections. Like if you drew a Mickey Mouse head, there's not shaped with the roundness, but just, you know, one section goes. I'll tell you all these lakes, like Yellowstone, Lake Hebegon, um, obviously Island Park. The, these ones, they have these finger-like things that come off. But this had two, not just one. And I saw that lake or, or, or river, and I'm getting chills again, so that's correct. So when you're looking, whether it's a lake or a river, it would be a real wide river to me why I would think it was a lake. But, um, but then there's like two that go off. If you are on or near a lake or river... It's really dark out, and it's uh, really calm. Any boats are, like, small, it feels like. I don't see any dock. It feels like you'd just come up on the sand. Now, from a very literal viewpoint, when you are standing at the cabin... Can you visibly see any commercial buildings? No, there's nothing for a long a time. Is there any commercial buildings near that cabin that you can show me, even if they're not visible, to help identify the location of the cabin? Exxon? Mobile is that a separate one? Exxon Mobile feels like there's a little street, a uh, little street that does have several businesses, like maybe a drive up, not an A and W, but that type of like say an original 1960s McDonald kind of look. You know, basic couple, maybe a little convenience store. Um, While you are standing not close by the cabin. The cabin. I got chills. What types of vehicles do you see parked in the driveway? You know, it almost looks like army grade or something like that. Now, probably to go with the outdoors up there. But it would be the kind that might have a very t small words, motor, also might have paddles, and, and it might, you know, maybe seat four people. There's no 
shielding from the sun or anything. It's just to go out and go fishing on. Big major trees are cleared away. What do you see right around that? Within a hundred feet of that cabin, is there a bunch of trees? No trees? One or two trees? What do you see? Um, I see trees. I see trees within a hundred feet of it. Yeah. They're all over the property, but they're not like so thick you can't see. Like they they've been spaced out between the like the cabin and the uh, water. It feels like it's been cleared, but there there's still trees spotting the property. Yeah. Just trail. I feel like there's a dirt road coming, and, and that the reason why you don't it. see another cabin on that side. Like if you were at the dirt road looking at this cabin is because it goes kind of up a hill a little bit so that there you wouldn't just have a cabin right there. Um, that's probably what gives it partly the privacy. Um, and um, I can't remember. So I'll just look at the address until I see 4187-3174. Now let, let me see. These numbers is I'm I'm gonna try to look at the mailbox because I uh, I keep seeing an eight I see a four I see a seven and I see a three but not in that order three four eight seven four three eight seven oh nine yeah the oh nine oh nine is there a nine in there I think there might be a nine. At the end, like, is there an eight nine at the end? Like, I think that might be right. Four something eight nine four three eight nine. Can you describe any neighbors to that cabin? Did you see any neighbors outside? It feels like there's that that hill is that way. So on on the side that we're on, there's other cabins. And like if you walk up to the driveway from there, you can see where the driveway is to the next one. It feels to me like the gro road is graveled over, like some gravel between on this, the road between these little houses. So maybe whether there was dirt road getting up to here, maybe all these neighbors or something got together and made gravel on their road. It feels like there's gravel going into the driveway too. But what the weirdest part is, I feel like there's concrete right around. It's almost like you pull into there and then finally there is a bit of concrete to park on or something. It's really weird like that. Spirit guides can help. Anybody who knows, is this cabin owned by a friend or associate? Or is it owned by direct family members of Chad or Lori or these type of people? I'm seeing this man, and it's really funny. He's not the man I saw the other time. I don't know that, I wouldn't call him Italian, but, you know, if he was a quarter Italian, I wouldn't be kind of surprised. He kind of has a big nose. He's, he's probably 20, 30 pounds overweight. He, he um, has dark brunette hair. Um, I'm not sure who he is or how he's related. He's definitely not the guy from the Harley. And I don't even know that he's the owner. They're just showing him to me. Um, pretty funny. I mean, interesting. I don't know who he is. He just comes into the picture. Who owns this cabin? What is the name of the person? Are they a friend or a family member? It's definitely a cabin that multiple people who are part of these this group, um, they have had gatherings there or where I can see, you know, uh, multiple people, um, you know, maybe that are like 10 people or something, eight people six people um but groups like that who have stayed there together and they're all like outside sitting around I talking like and stuff know, so they know about this this is Joe this Charles. is one of theirs um, i'm feeling that members of that group though have been there i feel like Lori's been there i feel definitely feel like chad has been there 
Uh, I feel like these people are associated uh, more closer friends with Chad. Um, I got chills about that. They're more associated with Chad than they are with Lori. Um, and I would like to say that Chad helped Lori um, to refer her to where set this up. Um, I, and I'm getting chills with that. Um, and I would like to say and see if um, Chad was aware that Lori was planning on murdering her children. And I'm getting very big chills with that. So did Chad helped with the planning of it by arranging a location where he felt that she would never be seen? And uh, he, big chills, big chills, all oh, 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 my whole legs are chills. Uh, not the 10 chills, but um, that, um, so, so, okay, they're, um, I'm having wave of spirit energy. And so this is people of Chad and Chad arranged the location because he knew they could get away with it there. I'm seeing that weird trim, like this weird trim that they used to put on the 50s and 60s and stuff, like say up the, by the corner and that maybe it's because they want to show me now. I'm I'm seeing more or not. I don't know if they, have, they wouldn't have wooden roofs there, but it feels more like a shingle roof than a metal roof that I'm seeing right now. And it also seems like, um, um, well, anyways, up by where there's a point. So there's some sort of point in the roof. Um, they have like... It's like a cut out piece of wood where they put like two or three holes drilled that are maybe about an inch wide or so that I don't know. Maybe if a bird made a nest in there, they might stick their head out. Like, I don't know what's the point of that, but it's like some way of decorating from that time period. Again, I'm seeing dark brown. Please take me along with you on the course of events that led up to and prior to the murder. I feel like I had to protect JJ from my mom because I feel like I'm, 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 my mom um, is, is it, you know, got the sinisterness. And, and I feel like I need to protect JJ. And I already know my uncle's weird. But my mom's um, like crazy, gone crazy. The other part she put, the feeling of um, needing to protect JJ against his, her mom, who she thinks has gone nuts, like not even in this time zone, you know what I mean? Um, she's trying to eat in the car. She's real stressed out listening to them talk. It's like they think it's great, all the bad stuff they do. And they talk about it, like, right in front of her and J.J. J. I don't know that J.J. is paying attention, but it's shocking to her. She feels shocked. Lori and Alex and Tylee and J.J. reached the cabin where Tylee was I feel like we go back out Yellowstone. I'm going to say this back up the 20, back out of Yellowstone that way, the direction of Island Park. Did you sleep at that cabin even one night? I feel like it's late. I feel like it's already like nighttime, dark, pitch dark, like when we pull in there. I feel like JJ's asleep in the car. I feel like I don't feel like I even brought my stuff in, like. I feel like this happens almost instantly. I feel like JJ's asleep in the car. And I mean, they just see their opportunity and take it. Um, I feel like they walk her to say, oh, let's go we look over here. Come over here. I, she doesn't want to go look over there. It is important. Alex and Lori taking Tylee and they wanted to show her something outside. I think JJ was asleep. Um, and at the same time, they both attacked her and Lori was hitting her in the head with a metal pipe and Alex was sh choking her with a rope. I would like to know if that was correct. If that was correct, can you please show me exactly where that happened in relation to the cabin? Was it inside? Was it in that garage workshop? Was it outside on a trail? 
Or was it, was it in the house? Was it in the actual cabin? Can you show me all the details surrounding this from beginning to end? And I will try to say every single thing you show me. I am wondering where this place is that doesn't have... It has a roof, maybe, but they're... They're redoing the part right under the roof. Might not have a roof at all, but they might only be just like redoing the part around before you build the roof, like around the couple of feet below that. Ah, I don't know. I'm just seeing it. I don't. I don't know. I'm seeing it. I'm still seeing it. I, I, I'm seeing. I'm seeing Tylee hit, hit in the head, and um, yeah. Ugh. They're both doing it at the same time, okay? So, um, so um, he's punching her in the head. He's got the rope. He likes pulling the rope, and then, and then Lori is just trying to smash her. Oh, like Alex is trying to hold it while he's like pinning her down uh, by her. Literally, got his knee in her back, and 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 Lori is just smashing her over and over in the head. Uh, he's holding the rope. He's got the rope twisted. And he's holding it, choking her at the same time. And then he's got her face, they, he's got her face down, he's got his knee in her back, and Lori's smashing her in the head over and over with it, like, um, some kind of pipe. Mm. Is this correct? Yeah, I got, I got, literally got chills on both legs. This is correct. Uh, this is correct. I got chills on both legs. It's bad. They're still doing it. It went on. It took them a little while, I think, to kill her. Um, she did suffer and that, that is important to know. I got huge chills, huge, huge. You're getting bigger. Oh my God. Massive pressure chills going up to my hips. Now, Tylee really suffered when they murdered her. This is important. It's important. And I got chills all the way up to my waist now. Um, it, it's really important because when they go to court, this isn't about sensational. This is about when they go to court they made her, she suffered. She suffered. This wasn't a quick bullet to the head. This was them doing this, the quick, quiet, or they, whatever. They, did they, Alex is shaking on her. The mother's just smashing her in the head over her, And this is going on and on. This is not a quick one minute death. It's like she's trying to gasp for air, um, and the um, like rooms. You know how the visions are going off, and um, like the equilibrium's going off. Like she's on the ground, pinned on the ground, being choked and having her head smashed at the same exact time, and um, it, it takes them several minutes though. Uh, uh, Lori just keeps hitting her in the head. Um, Lori, I think, even after she's unconscious, is smashing her in the head, head still. Uh, Lori's, um, it's overkill. It feels like overkill on the head there. Because Alex finally, you know, gets up and is like, you know, she's dead. She's dead, Mon, leave it alone, or something like that. She's dead. Okay, so now Lori looks at Alex like, what are we going to do with the body? Like, She's not having any feelings whatsoever. It's not like, oh, I just killed my daughter. She's just like evil's taken over her. Darkness. She's not, there's no feeling, remorse, gross, whatever. Nothing. Nothing. Not nothing. And it's, and it's beyond, it's, it's, it's a movement towards, now let's deal with the body. Not like, okay, let's take a minute or what to do. It's now let's deal with the body. It, 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 she, there's not even a thought about the murder that she just murdered her own daughter even the slightest bit
I feel like they put Charlie up on this table. Uh, let me get it more because Okay, in my mind, they would hang a piece of a big animal, like a big animal. But I'm, it's almost like there's a, would you call it a giant cutting board? Would you have something with a giant cutting board that actually has drain thing on all sides of it? Because if you have that, if that exists, kind of what I'm seeing I'm almost seeing, now for some bizarre reason, I'm seeing a rodeo. If Tylee was murdered and she was dismembered, did both Alex and Lori work together to chop her body and cut her body into little pieces in that workshop? Including, did they put a piece on the Spitfire and cook it? Any business cards? It's turning out to be way messier than they planned. Anything that could identify... Like way more blood going all over than they planned. It, I don't know if that table would have a drain on all four sides. Because it might almost be something that's up against a wall, yet there's a drain on three sides and where... And, and then it goes up a little like a counter does so that anything would... Um, go off there. into this drain, like oh, what they were um, talking about, I feel like it's a giant cutting board made for gutting thing. animals, even though I know they, they hang them up. So why there must be something like this? So I'll look on the internet because I see it and it's clear. It almost looks like when you feed animals through the the, th the things, you feed animals through it. You know, you used to put the hay in there, and the little sheep come up and eat it through the metal bars. But then if you took and you put a table-like thing or a, you know, or cupboard top on top of something like that, that's kind of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're showing me this thing with the bars again. It's it's definitely a thing. It's definitely a thing. And it, it could be a homemade contraption. It's almost like you, you could cut specific pieces of meat on there, big giant pieces of meat from an animal maybe even if you had the animal hanging up outside from a cherry picker like type of thing or something but whatever wherever there is this thing there and it, i do believe it has a kind of drain i mean in it it might even be more than a drain it might have a pail or something for catching guts like i don't know exactly i don't see that part they're just they just show me this metal framing part so someone may have this may be a homemade thing, or they may sell them that there. I have never seen anything like this. I do feel like he has this owl. He has an owl in the um, garage that he did taxidermy or had taxidermy. It has. It's. A, it was once a live owl, and I also feel like a peasant or you know pheasant. Um, those types of uh, bird. I feel like one of them too. Oh, here's, this is this older guy again. He, yeah, he's nice. He has a face of a nice person. He did this, this one I'm seeing, I, I, makes me wonder 100% if it's the same as that guy. I don't know. Okay, I wouldn't even call out a, there's a debate. There might be two different men. I've seen three men now. I don't know who that darker guy was that just came into the thing and left. And I don't even know who that was. If it was that a neighbor, I don't know. And then the guy I saw with Charles, I think was a little bigger and uh, a little more, like I say, Daniel Boonish. Um, this guy almost looks like a nice little Santa Claus. Not fat like that, but um, just light skinned, kind of white hair, kind of, this guy's a little older than the other one. I want. I don't know how they're related and stuff, but but um, this guy's hair has gone fully white. He likes. He's the one who likes to do stuff in the garage it, that might have to do with, you know, he puts on this apron and stuff that might have to do with um um um, um gutting animals or doing this taxidermy stuff or whatever. It's um this older guy. That is not funny.
So what about the trapper? Like, you know, sometimes multiple people own cabins, but it could also be another person who uses it or who goes there or there's just showing me because that person uses it too. I don't know. Like, with with Charles, I felt that that guy was the owner. Like, there was no doubt. Um, this guy, I don't even know who he is, but he's working, and he puts on a, a apron in there. Um, and this is separate. Tylee's not there when he's doing this, so they're just showing me this guy who normally is in there. He's nice. So I'm going to ask them to clear that and take me back to when Tylee got murdered. Um, and I need to see who exactly and what they exactly did. He tried to use a hacksaw. Cut off her knee. Cut her off at the knees. So gross. He, he used the little axe things for that. So there's, there's the... There's even something that almost looks like a medieval chopper. Not that big, but more the size of a hand axe. But say if it was like um, maybe six inches a blade around, but it would be like the shape of these things from the medieval times where you chop stuff. Um, even something like that. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It seems like a really weird, but this seems to be upsetting Alex at the moment a little worse than Lori. The, this part about the dismembering, um, he's doing it, but he feels a little queasy, and she's like harping for him to get quicker. Like, I don't know if she's the one who did the axe on the knees. Like, get with it. Like, she, it's like she, it's, she, it means nothing to her. And, um, it's not that it means anything to Alex either, the death, but he's grossed out. I don't know if she wants him to disembowel Tylee. Um, I'm getting some spirit energy that I'm correct on some parts of this. I, I mean, I can't imagine why someone would do that. Actually, I'm getting a little more chills. <laughs> Is to have the animals eat him, right? Yeah. So, like, if you took out the organs, kind of, you, you, all you got to do is jump in there and the animals would eat them right away. Uh, get rid of uh, the body quicker. Yeah. So, I'm getting not massive chills, but I'm giving, getting uh, some chills and I'm definitely getting a rise in energy on. So, I'm not exactly right. Whatever I'm saying isn't exactly it, but there's something along that idea. Tyler was dismembered and put into pieces. Did they put the pieces in a bag or in multiple bags? And if so, what color were the bags? Were they black bags like leaf bags? And did they turn around and wrap those in the white butcher paper for meat? Or oh, to make it look like they had done something with an animal? Or did they just put the pieces in boxes? What did they do with the pieces? And were they all in one bag or box? Or was there multiple bags or boxes? And what did they do with all this? Pieces, did they put them in the car, truck, or other vehicle? Did they bury any of them at the cabin? Did they really cook a piece of Tylee on the spit? What did they do after they had chopped in little pieces? Where did they put all the little pieces? Okay, so it feels like this weird table thing. It feels like you can move the table part. So you can push not just blood to drain into this 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 metal thing below, um, but pieces. So pieces of organs, legs, arms, hands, whatever. All the pieces, like and uh, what you would do with an animal, 
And you, so you can put them in there, and then afterwards you have like a hose kind of thing that you can pull out and you clean everything off. So this thing is actually made to be able to wash pretty much not guts down it, cause, but to wash stuff like that to get all the extra yuck off everything and all the extra blood off the meat when you're doing all this or something or clean it or something, you know, but so, so this is on a slider. So the, the top of this metal frame, if this guy made it himself, I even think it, someone would have patented that because, okay, so they moved, you can slide like on little rollers, this counter where you cutting counter, and then you've pushed big pieces of meat into this, um, which is a giant s stainless steel sink or something like that. Um, it, it, you know, it looks to me like someone could have welded pieces of sheet metal together to make this. And um, and so then there, and then you have all these pieces of her. She's in like lots of pieces. And then you could spray it off and that's going to spray off lots of blood, right? So um, there's lots of pieces like her head's off. Um, I see... I see lots of pieces. Let's just say I see pile. I see pile of pieces. And, um, okay, so Lori's got like a really thick he hefty black bag, hefty bag like. And then they've got something else like a trunk. Lori doesn't even care and she actually bitches at Alex the whole time. He helped her. He had no problem helping her murder Tylee. And the, the, he, where he's kind of grossed out is all his blood and gut stuff. Like, you know, gross, literally. Picking up innards, insides of, of this person. He, he, he's grossed out. I don't get him a feeling like, oh, poor Tylee. Oh, my niece. I don't get that feeling, but I get the feeling of him being grossed out and Lori bitching at him. Like, she does not like... It, when there's weakness in other people, it feels like she just goes in for the kill. Um, as far as, okay, he's acting weak, so that makes her pissed. And she's taking energy and she's um, like uh, being really mean, ordering him around and stuff. Alex would have been proud of himself just about the murder, but it just feels like a little sick to his stomach is what it is like. You know, it's, it's gross. But they're putting her in a, a black hefty bag. and But I do feel like they put that hefty bag inside some kind of trunk. And I feel like they load it up. Onto their pickup truck, like they're gonna deal with it the, that night. They they don't bring it in the house. It might be one of those things that um, goes onto the back of the truck, pickup truck. You know those things that are like lock boxes on there. They might have put her in that. Show me why they did murder JJ then too, or they did not murder JJ at the same time. Show me everything going around that scene in the morning. When J.J. gets up, if he gets up. Okay, so they take her body out, and I feel like loaded the hefty bags full of body parts directly into there, and then carried it out and put it on the back of the truck, like, kind of quietly. And then they might have saved that piece, so in case anyone was watching, it would seem normal, like they would be having this, you know, cooking this big piece of meat or whatever that that essentially was part of her leg is that anywhere close to correct yeah it is it's it's i'm getting chill on one leg i'm getting i got a rise in spirit energy it's close to correct i'm sure it's not exactly right i keep seeing this foot jj also murdered at that cabin or any other cabin, or was he murdered in the condominium that they lived at 
please show me the location and every single thing about the murder of JJ that you can think of if JJ is murdered. If JJ is not murdered and he is alive, please show me him where he is, and I mean in his physical body. If he is in his physical body, show me the people he is with now. Or if he has been murdered, show me the location of where JJ was murdered. Show me the room JJ was murdered in. And show me what happened. Show me everything now. Just every single thing about JJ um, and his death, if he's dead. Show me everything now as far as the location where this happened at. Not where he was brought to, but just where it happened at. And all the scene around that, what everyone was wearing, what clothes they were wearing, who was present, who saw his dead body. Was the Melanie there? Ian there? How many people were there present when JJ died? Did they know ahead of time that Lori was going to do that? Who was the man that helped Lori? Was that Chad or Alex murder JJ? If JJ was murdered, please show me the location and every single thing related to the actual death from the beginning until the end and show me the location, show me all the details of the area surrounding any people who were present and even if once he was dead or any other people that come in present that see him, his dead body, was there friends, associates, or relatives? Was Melanie present? Was Alex present? Was Chad present? Who saw JJ's dead body? Now, so from the very beginning of JJ, please show me where he was murdered at, how he was murdered, who was present, and every single detail about it that may be helpful. Oh, I'm definitely seeing a bag over the head, and I'm seeing something I did not see the other time is duct tape around that bag, around the head. So, I'm trying to see, okay, I'll just say what they show me. Okay, so I'm seeing um, Lori is the person who did it. She put the bag over the head she also feels like she did the duct tape like she's just not she just goes like full bore steam ahead and she's got like she's got you would think she would have done the duct tape first but I'm seeing her um cases okay, so like she puts the duct tape she puts that bag over his head and she's like twisting it around trying to like Make sure he can't get air. And but then and then some I know some man is there and I I wonder if it's Chad. I'm not sure. No, I'm not getting any energy about that. Um okay, so so okay, I'll just get cuz I know from I know there's a, someone man there that comes and helps her, but um right now I haven't seen that yet cuz what I'm getting they're still getting they want to show me that she was struggling because she she was like holding this on his head and he's trying to push her hands away. So he's trying to push her arm. He's trying to push her chest, but he's not strong enough. And she's holding it down and she's trying to get this duct tape. Uh, she's trying to use her teeth to get duct tape with one hand while she's trying to hold his neck. She's trying to squish his neck, um, hold the bag on his neck, but he's trying to fight her. Um, he's trying to like... Um, you know, I don't know if he can really scratch, but he's trying to like get her away, push her away. Uh, he's struggling. So it's not being as easy as she wanted. Um, that's when the, the, the guy, whoever's there, that's when the guy comes across and he, um, 
and he holds now he holds the face now he's got his whole hand over the face and his hand over the neck while she's uh, pulling out this duct tape now and she's wrapping duct tape around where his neck is but at, and, and at the same time um this guy's just trying to now he's putting his knee across um his neck um trying to um squish his neck and trying to put it, cover his hand in his face and um and he's like you know shaking his body um and and, and urinates on himself um and he's wearing pajamas when all this happens he's not in bed but he's wearing pajamas flannel pajamas they might be what stark blue with little moons and stars on them i'm not sure don't get me on that um i'm not positive but i i do definitely feel they are flannel pajamas the 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 the, the coloring the pattern on them might not be correct because they've shown me now i see two or three which it kind of tells me I don't have that part right. That's what I'm starting to get off. Every group of spirits works a little different. That's the thing. Okay. Was JJ buried whole? Was he buried in one piece or was he dismembered also? Um, there's no way Alex wanted. Alex didn't want to do that again. That's so gross. That too gross to mount. That gross is gross to mount. The killing part didn't bother him. The, the 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 seeing the intestines and stuff bothered him. At the time of JJ's they cut over open her belly even was like the really good stuff. Kylie being stored in a freezer, or had they already been dispersed? Can you show me how Tylee's body was at the time of JJ's death? I, I feel like some pieces of Tylee were wrapped up in white paper, butcher paper and stored in the deep freezer. Maybe at Chad's house. I don't know. Yeah. So he would have told um, Tam, just marked it that it was for somebody else's and Tammy wouldn't have said anything. And he put it in the deep freezer. Hey, this is for so-and-so, whatever. And I got spirit energy. I actually got a little bit of chills on my legs about that. Did Chad store part of Tylee's body pieces? And did Chad also get rid of some of Tylee's body pieces? They haven't shown me that yet. I mean, they did a long time ago, but we'll see this time. Every time it's new, just brown new, fresh, blank. they were buried separately in completely separate areas can you show me the location where JJ was buried if he was buried up off an embankment or by a river or by a lake can you please find a sign or like if it was snake river can you find a snake if it was Whatever, just find something to tell me where and show me where the body of JJ was put. If JJ was buried in a hole, was that hole dug prior to JJ's death? Who dug the hole? Did more than one person dig the hole for JJ? Was it Chad and Alex together? Was it Chad and Alex and Ian? Was there more than one man digging a hole? Was Lori help digging a hole? How many people had shovels? How many people were there? And how many people were digging the hole for JJ? And did they do this before his death or after his death? Please show me them digging the hole. Show me the tools they were using Show me the clothes they were wearing. 
Show me how hard the ground was. Show me the exact location now. And show me if they wrapped JJ's body. Was he wearing clothes? If so, what clothes was he wearing when they wrapped up his body? Did they put it in a blanket? Did they put his body wrapped in plastic? If if he had clothes on under that or, or pajamas, what exact clothes was he wearing then? What did they wrap him up in? When when you look at the gravesite for JJ, why did they choose this gravesite? Was there a personal thing where, say, Chad knew you would never find a body there? Was it Chad's idea to bury it there? Um, or different associate? Of I'm woman? getting energy about it being Chad DNA. Chad's idea to bury it there. Who suggested the gravesite for JJ and why? Why was this gravesite chosen? How many people? were in on the disposal of JJ. How many people were digging the graves? And please show me the people. Show me the faces of however many people were doing it, digging the graves, why they were doing it, how hard it was. Did they have special equipment for a hole? And how deep they dug the hole? And anything else you can to take us to the location and show us the specific location of JJ Thank you. And this is five minutes I'm going to give you for this. What I'm seeing is um, it looks like it's an opening to an old mine and um, real thick wood around the old mine. And it feels like Chad knows a body would never be found there. And it's really weird because before where I kept seeing him buried up off the river or whatever, and maybe he is, but right now I'm seeing in a mine tunnel, mine shaft, and it feels like when you go in there about 20 feet, and no, I'm just joking. Feels like when you go in there about 10 feet and you take a right, um, there's a cul-de-sac. Something's weird here. Railroad, a mine. These could be names, too. I'm seeing a mine. I'm seeing the wood, dark wood. I, I'm seeing it's like you walk into, or a cave, like you'd walk into a cave. There's definitely bushes that are about two or three feet high there. Where'd they bury JJ? The reason I say that is they did, once they put the dirt back over, they're putting these bushes back on there to regrow. So that it'll grow over like it won't, no one will be able to tell anything was buried there. Ch Chad shows me how to make the mound so that because he knows how it will, much will sink in so he knows you put it up you know in a mound and then put it and then within a you know short amount of time it'll be flat and they flattened it they they once they put the bushes in they like flattened it they did their they actually did quite a bit of work to make it cover up they didn't just bury it in the dirt and leave. By it, I mean the body. The exact shape of the lake, an exact area of the state, if it was in Idaho or over the border of Montana. Please show me every single landmark now in relationship to the burial of JJ that could possibly help literally locate his body. There's this little cross. I'm seeing a little uh, headstone cross um, like you would see at a graveyard. I'm seeing it um, feels like you drive by it 
on a, by the two lane road. And Lori says something like, I'll just remember my little JJ there. Close enough, hey, like that or something like. But it feels like when you leave the area where you buried JJ, it feels like off to the right is um, a very small old graveyard, which probably, I don't know if there would be room in it anymore. Just some remnant of the past. Um, Lori's singing, like, I'm free and freedom stinks of reality. Some... She's like happy. She's like celebrating. Like She's free now. She's free. She doesn't have feelings of remorse or guilt or sadness or anything. Has JJ's remains been buried at the same time or if they were buried separately? If they were buried separately, can you please show me the location or locations where Tylee's remains were either buried or scattered? And the same thing, all the coordinates that you can possibly muster up to show the exact location of Tylee's remains now. Are they all buried? Are they all scattered? Is there some in the freezer somewhere? Where are Tylee's remains? If they were put somewhere separately than JJ or the same? I feel like they're near each other. I feel like... um. Chad Daybell. I'm seeing Chad. Chad may have actually went and spread the body parts of Tylee. I'm not sure about that. I'm not having any energy at all, but I see him doing it. I see him doing it, putting him in different bushy areas, and I think where they think they made it small enough where animals will just take him away. And, um... It's an area Chad feels very comfortable in. And, um, I feel like Lori, Alex, and Chad, while they go there to disperse body parts of Tylee, they um, begin to dig the hole for. JJ, but JJ is not dead yet. But Alex is like, I don't want to do that again. Um, he's not into the whole chopping people up thing, and um, so um, that's why they're digging the hole um, for JJ. It's it's not, there's no emotional attachment either way to what they're doing. It's the three of them though. When they were digging the graves, at least I didn't get a chance to look and see. There's more. Or the ground being frozen. I feel like with anything. the dispersal of the body parts of Tylee, Chad was involved with that. And I feel like actually Chad picked the place for them to murder Tylee. Um, he, I don't know anything about how, how much influence he had about murdering Tylee, but I feel like he picked the place, he knew the place, and he knew that they wouldn't be seen there. I felt like that, I feel like that, and I feel like uh, Chad did help disperse her body parts, even though he wasn't there when she was murdered, I don't think, and then, um, she, I don't know if she was murdered, I don't know if she was murdered in conjunction to that Yellowstone thing, just because nobody saw her then, I don't know about that, one way, I don't know one way or another, but I'm not, I'm not just accepting that timeline until I see about it. Was there a trail marker anywhere? Did they pull up in a little boat? How and where did they get JJ's body to this place? What, what I'm seeing is the maneuvering with the storage unit, and um, they put JJ in some kind of box or something. Um, I mean, it actually looks like a box. So, to look like they're moving all this stuff or doing all this stuff, whatever it is they're doing doesn't look suspicious, 
when they carry them out because it looks like it's look, like if you buy something and it comes in a box or something like if you bought a bookshelf and you have to put it together it comes in a box you know that type of thing it feels like that's what they put them in and um it feels like that that wherever they took the the seed out of the truck they probably put them back please there please tell me now and please look is this area where jj was buried with the remains of tylee put in the same hole or was tylee in a completely scattered nearby or was tylee's remains put in a completely different location if Tylee's remains were put in a completely different location, please show me what you just showed me, JJ, but then move me to the new location where Tylee is. So if she's in the same location, keep me there. If, she, if she's in a different location, put me now at the location where Tylee's remains were put and was Tylee buried, or was she just scattered? And where, or fed to animals, where? I feel and like, I Tylee feel like Tylee was sc scattered on the top of the ground. And if so, I feel like Tylee was scattered. And I feel like they didn't, it's almost like if you were hiding Easter uh, Easter eggs, how much you would hide them. So yeah, you would put it slightly under the bush, but it was actually left out in small enough pieces where they thought the animals would just take it away. I'm, I'm saying pieces as small as s six inches. And, you know, I'm talking about cutting the hands off, cutting the elbows off, cutting the arms off. Um, like lots of pieces and and just walking around and literally putting a oh, piece under this bush, piece under that bush. They don't even act like they think it's a person. Did a group of people go there to do some kind of ritual for either child? Show me. And if they're separate, show me them separate. If they're together, show me them together. I feel like it's Chad all the way of the location of where to put the pieces of Tylee's body. Um, I feel like Lori's with them. If Alex is there, he's back in the distance a little bit about on that one. Um, I'm not even sure if he's there at all right then. I, at some point, he is helping dig a grave at that same area. I don't know that he's there during the dispersal of the um, pieces of Tylee. But it really feels like they're in the same area. So that's weird. So there's an area that Chad knows where he feels like, well, one, he feels comfortable enough to go do this, that he won't be disturbed. I mean, you have to not worry about someone walking up on you, right? And off to the side near i mean i would it feels like but with mediumship you could tell there's distance issues there's time issues it, it's different there's no time there and I, I don't know if there's distance or not but so it feels close by though it feels it feels to be the same area like you wouldn't drive to a different area to do this I feel there is a river near there. If those items were remained on her when if and they dismembered her. I don't know if it's the Snake River or not because we don't have time. Described as her body was put into multiple places or in one hole with JJ or without JJ. Okay, I feel like the pieces of Tylee were frozen. I feel like they were dispersed. They weren't. I don't even feel like they were buried even shallowly. I feel like they were placed under bushes, you know, apart from each other, literally like you would do an Easter egg hunt. Um, I feel like, so they were expecting animals to get, take them away pretty much. Um, and, and, but they, it was, it's all the same area. It's not like 
driving out your car and throwing one piece and then going 10 more, you know, minutes and driving another. It, it feels like all in the same area, like you're walking around hiding these or just sticking them under bushes. So there's some sort of foliage there. Um, is there a place for JJ near the original cabin where Kylie was murdered? So did they go back to that cabin and stay there for a night and bury JJ there? Or did they bury JJ in an entirely separate place? So you can show me, like, did they put JJ's body in any kind of little boat to go where the grave site, where they were going to take him? Did they go up a river or on a uh, lake or anywhere in the process with JJ's body to bury him? Oh, Laurie's really mean. She's really vindictive. She's just a piece of work. Like, I feel like she has Alex on, is in the passenger and, and Chad's driving right now. And Laurie's in the middle. And I feel like JJ is in the back, dead. For JJ, she's and Lori's got happy. Lori's got no problem at all. If they did not go on water, or they did. How far from the main road is this? Like, did they murder him at the condominium and then just drive there? Did they have a pre-dug hole and a pre-planned place? And how do you get to there off the main road? The cross. There's a cross near there somewhere. I don't. I, I don't think they put a cross at the gravesite, but there's a cross near there somewhere. Um, I don't know if it's on the front of the church. Or I don't know if it's at the little a little cemetery you drive by, but I just feel like there's a cross somewhere near there. A road, whether it's a, even a dirt road. How far? Did they have to carry JJ's body to put it in the grave site? And was the hole dug already when they got there? But how far from the road? So they pull up, and was it a paved road or a dirt road? And is there any road signs to indicate where this is, where JJ is buried? Yes, there is road signs to indicate where JJ is buried. Is where JJ was buried anywhere near the cabin where Tylee was murdered? When I get that, I feel like, yeah, it's off to that side. Like, they're back at the cabin. Yeah, oh, I got chills. So they so they murdered Tyler at the cabin, took her pieces back. Alex and Chad, were there two men? Ian, were there three men? Lori, Melanie. I wonder if Chad came up there after to help them get rid of the body. When they filled in the grave with little JJ. Okay. When they murdered Tylee, Chad came up the next day or soon after, within a two to four days for sure. So Chad comes up there, it felt like the next day, and he helped them. He knew where to go on the little boat. He knows his way around. He's been here. He's so familiar with this place. It's ridiculous. This is Chad's connection. Totally. And, and they go up on the boat, and, and Chad's proud of himself because he knows where she'll never be found. And at this point, it does, I don't feel like they had murdered JJ yet. We don't know if he murdered him on this trip. So Chad comes up to the cabin after. So they, that's why they're there alone. Alex and Lori murder J J Tylee. And then they put her in, and they clean her off, they cut her in pieces, they do all this stuff, they put her in the deep freezer and wait for Chad, because Chad's somewhere, 
And then when Can Chad gets there, they, yeah. That the grave was dug for JJ. Did they dig this grave ahead of time? And how far ahead of time? For instance, was Tylee dead already when they went and started digging the grave for JJ? And was the ground hard? Was there snow on the ground? Was the ground soft where they went? I feel like the ground was not too hard to dig into. Um, at least, but they didn't go digging six feet. It feels like they dug... Like, once you lay his body in there, might be a foot, so the, maybe they dug two feet deep. So we've covered they spread her parts. Okay, but going back to burying JJ, um, that first time I saw him wrapped in plastic, right now I just see his face, and it might be because they're showing me that it is JJ. Um, so that's why you can't assume that he wasn't wrapped in plastic. He may or may not have been, but right now I'm seeing JJ's face. I'm seeing him laying in this grave, and I'm seeing that it's like no more. It, it might only be like a foot deep. Um, yeah, I got a little chill. It's a foot and a half. Yeah, uh, two feet. Somewhere between one and two feet deep. It's not a like four foot deep grave. Chad helped dig that hole. Chad went there the day, the I don't know if the exact next day, but I mean, it kind of what feels like it, but within, within a few days, whatever, you know, within that trip, Chad comes like up. Big piece of log, anything put on top of the grave area for JJ. I feel and like Lori takes off a Charlie. necklace. She takes a necklace, a chain thing she wears with a medallion on her necklace, and she put it, um, she put it on top of JJ when she buried him. I don't know that literally she ripped it off her own neck, but it 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 felt like it for a second. But then I'm not so sure about that. Um, but it definitely what feels like it's some kind of religious medallion thing. She grave. put it on top of him with a chain. To, Has a little chain. Uh, Chad Daybell? Was JJ buried during the day or night? And what was the temperature? during the burial. <clears throat> it definitely feels like night. It does feel, the ground does feel cold. It feels like it has the frost on it, not snow. Were they buried at the exact same night, or were they buried at completely different dates? Show me on a calendar, mark the dates, or show me by the moon, however you show me, but show me if they were buried on one date or on two separate dates, and show me the dates. So they may have been buried the same night, but um, murdered on different nights. Um, I feel like Chad was there when JJ was murdered. I don't have any energy right now, but earlier when I saw the murder, it felt to me like he was. So, so I don't know. So maybe I'm blending things, so let's clear that. So we need to go with Joe and Charles and Tylee back to the cabin where the cabin area where Tylee was murdered. It does feel like it's on water. 
It feels like it slopes down kind of, not steep, but just slopes. It feels like you go in. She's not murdered and she's still alive. Just put a big X over it. There might be gravel road, and then, it, but it feels like it turns into a pavement driveway right up by the house. And it feels like the house it long ways faces the dirt road, and then off to the left is that workshop thing. And through all that, I can see down to the water. Show me the color. Show me the material it's made out of wood or metal. Gr- was a garage where a car would pull Oh, the in? garage. Or does it look like it was made to only be a workshop or something in between? Can you show it to me and just describe everything you see about this garage? I feel like that it's a possibility that somebody at one time could have had it for a one bedroom, I mean, a one car garage. Uh, external to the house and then I don't know but maybe if they added on like a half of a second story and then they made the carport at that time I'm not sure what they did but it feels like it is being used for a dedicated workshop type place it doesn't feel like anybody parks cars in there at this time it feels like it's made for whatever they use it for describe everything you can about the interior of this garage slash workshop again if, if i'm starting to wonder if there's two buildings there it almost feels possible it? that this original wooden thing when on the left of the driveway when you come in if it was originally built so they use it it's for a little dedicated workshop to something but it almost feels to me like there's also besides that a second more like prefab warehouse looking but not big but you know that would fit like four cars if they were parked right next to each other that you might park different things and do different things and use regular tools so it might be that the other one is dedicated for the you know skinning bucking whatever and then then this one's for the things like snowmobiles or um just regular tools and regular projects do you see any deer park and deer meadows i need to look up antlers stored in the garage or any kind of giant hook that people hang animals from anything related to hunting skinning trapping or taxidermy Chad is personal friends with these people, but he's personal friends through his apocalyptic groups that he associates with. But but aside from just knowing each other, associating each other, he's actually friends with the family that owns that. Or or the you know, even if one person owns it, he's friends with their family. Like, so if the adult is around his age or not his age i don't know but i'm getting some energy but so he's friends with the that person's parents too and i i don't have massive chills but i have spirit energy so he he's friends with some of their family i have energy on that and so chad has become a personal friend to those people too i have chills about that Chills are going up my legs about Chad. They're showing me the same place they buried them before. Really big chills. That lake, the lake with the two fingers. If you if you made the two like the, you know your index finger, your pinky finger stand up, right? Then the palm of your hand or whatever is a, the lake, and then there's the two uh, things that come off it. Um, the one that would be your index finger if you were laying your hand down on the lake with the top of your hand facing the sky the one that would be your index finger that's the one I wait let me make sure after I talk all that I lose whatever I was getting now I don't want to be too sure but you go up one of them not very far like I swear like 20 feet I know it seems funny because of the 20 you go up one of them now I can't figure out which one. So that means I'm not deep enough. You go up one of those. And then when you're going up it. Oh, but the other night when I was there, I felt like that was to the left. 
to the right. If you're on the south side of the lake. Oh. All right. What's in between the two fingers? Is that one mound? So if you went up one of them, you could go the other way. And then if you went up the other one, you could go back to the same area, especially the other way. Used to dismember Tylee. Are the tools all still hanging on the wall? Did they rip them and hang them back on the wall? Did they throw some of them away? Or did they keep them all? Did they throw them in water? Where are the tools that was used, if any, to dismember Tylee? What happened to them? Chad um, had them, had Alex scrub them all off, soak them and scrub them. And it felt like, I feel like saying lye, L-Y-E, um, like soaking them in lye. Um... That could have given them a green tint or something, a green, some green looking to their, like when you look at them on the wall. Or freezers in the garage. Do you see any deep freezer in the garage at all? And also, did you see any deep freezer inside the cabin? But in, out in the garage, you see any deep freezers, fridges, or refrigerators? You know the weird thing is? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I get, I'm already getting chills on my legs. Is the, the the deep freezer would be in that newer little warehouse thing? Is there a drain anywhere? Is there concrete on the floor of the garage? Is there dirt? Is there gravel? What makes up the floor of the garage? And do you see a drain anywhere? Do you see blood left anywhere? If so, where? So the weird thing is. I see stuff to do with the dismemberment of Tylee in both the garage and this warehouse. This is why I'm wondering if I'm not quite seeing it right and they're just letting me see both right now because they know I'm not deep enough to really be there. Because if I go all the way into trance, I can't cognizate with my thinking part of my brain. That shuts down on purpose. And... um so maybe since I keep wanting to put like, oh, do you have one of these big warehouses like the picture I looked at today that somebody sent me? You know, like that, literally, which is what happened today. Um, so I'm not hinging on this warehouse thing, but I keep seeing it. So they might be letting me see it just so that I bring the little details together later. That's what I'm thinking. I'm just going to be in the smaller one because I know that one exists. But I feel like he's got a bird. It could be a, like a bird of prey. Maybe I should just leave it like that. Like I'm, I don't know if he's got the owl spreading its wings. Might be a different bird. As you exit the garage, coming out of the garage, what do you I see? I almost wonder if it's an you? eagle, but I don't Please think that's illegal. The trees that you see anywhere near the garage and how close, any plants you see, any decorations, such as how people put like old broken down cars as a decoration, or they'll put some old well as a decoration. What do you see around you when you come out of that garage? What I see is nobody's weed whacked around like it. It feels like there's almost a rockery. Like it almost feels like this slope you come in uh, uh, on the gravel part um, goes. It's the garage isn't right next to it. There's a f couple feet, but it's not like anyone really uses it. The weeds aren't huge, but they're like a foot and a half high or you know what I mean? It's not like someone's well groomed it. And, um, I still see water. So if I'm standing in front of the garage, the, the two doors on the small garage, I see water straight ahead, but down the slope. I, I, you know, I'm figuring we're, we're looking half an acre.
So it feels to me that Chad came up to the cabin after they had murdered and dismembered Tyler and done all that. And Chad is really proud of himself because he knows where it tied all these pieces where all the animals are going to get him. Someone, you know, is, is, does trapping, and I could think the guy showed him where all the, you know, they, they know where to trap all the animals, and um, so they knew where to put all the pieces of Tylee where animals always come to get food. I'm wondering if there's anyone besides Chad. So it feels like Chad was not there at the time they murdered Tylee, but that he came there in the day or days afterward. Then I still can't be sure, because it did feel like Ch Ch Chad uh, helped to murder JJ. I don't know if that was his plan. Actually, you could tell it wasn't this orchestrated plan. Lori decided to do it, and she decided to do it right then. And then... It felt like the man, and it really feels like Chad to me, uh, ran over and, and uh, put his leg squishing the boy's neck and hands over his face and while Lori's getting this duct tape. So while it did feel like Alex with Lori, it does feel like Chad assisting with this murder of J.J., It feels like, why would he wrap him, wrap him so, it feels like he's wrapping him super tight in um, plastic wrap stuff. Why, I don't know. It feels like when you walk down to the river or the lake, and it does feel like it's literally at this cabin. To the left is where you go with the bodies. And when there's the two forks um, of the river, the left fork and the right fork, it's, you would go on the left fork and you would... go up to the right but then I'm so turned around because that would mean that as I face and they're giving me chills so it takes me a while I'm dense but where we go to bury them even though you're looking to your left you're standing in front of the cabins behind you right and you're standing right at the water and you're looking to the left. You're going to the left. You're going to go down to the left, uh, uh, just a tiny bit up river, to bury these, dispose of these bodies. When you see the river, almost like the roots of a tooth, um, it's the one closest to you. Uh, on if you're looking at them both, there's one. You know, like I said, put your finger. Index finger and put your pinky finger, put your palm face down and put your hand facing the sky. It would be the one for your pinky finger if you're standing by your thumb, right? On that one. And but when you go up river a little bit, it's on your right. The reason I thought it was on the left is because I it's the directions when you go into trance is like um, there isn't any. And there isn't any time either. So we just go back and forth all over the place. And that's what we do. Um, but it's not quite that bad. But it, there really is no sense of time. So anyways, back to where these bodies are. Now, this was the thing. I think it was Charles. I can't remember if it was Charles or Joe. But I think... Okay, so he had me stand uh, where they went up at the bank but I was in the water and remember the water was I think I believe it was to the top of my thighs so the water right there where you go up was about four feet deep and it 
it could possibly be up to my waist. So you're, you're, I'm five foot nine. So you're talking f probably four feet, four and a half feet deep. And I think that's right now. I'm not sure. And some part of me feels like uh, um, that's the, actually the full time. It, um, it could have been that deep when they buried him, though, so I'm not quite sure. This isn't the whole point of it, so just, just whatever I just said, just kind of don't tell ladies to grab it. But anyway, um, when he had me face my back to the place where we're going to climb up to dispose of the bodies, they put the moon in front of me. So if I put my right arm straight in front of me, the moon was up in the sky, equal with about my right arm. And I said, oh, okay, so the, I'm, I have my, they made me very aware your back is to the embankment, okay, and the moon is to the south, no, not to the south, the moon semi rises right a little bit in the east but it's kind of like southeast or something i don't know exactly i looked up so i see this arc the the moon i looked up after the reading where i saw this the moon was to the right hand of me straight ahead up in the sky while i had my back to the embankment we we're going to climb up then when they knew i grasped that concept they moved the moon right in front of me all the way, which would be to the left, but kitty corner to me, which was telling me coordinates because the moon comes up in a certain place, which generally speaking, generally east, then goes to the west, according to this thing. If I am, I could be backwards. But if I'm backwards right now, what I said a minute ago was actually what I saw. What I looked up is what I'm talking about. So maybe I should wait. But it was possible to see where you would be in that lake area. Um, by That will help you knowing about that one thing. And I, I, I would be smarter to look up the interpretation I figured out on the internet after the reading. Because what I saw was... They put it up in the sky at the right, um, straight ahead of me, but up and with my right hand would be facing it. But then when, and once they did that, they moved it all the way right in front of me. They just moved it all the way to the left over there. And so when I looked that up, it showed me, um, what I would know whether I was like on the south part and the south, like where my back is to the embankment is facing a certain direction like I, I'll look it up because I could tell you if I look it up but that's it's really important and if you want to locate the body exactly oh man uh, mm -hmm. Let's see is there anything else you guys that we can think of I think Joe 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 and them could go all night at this I could go for a while more I do see across the lake, I see cabin. I do see a little dock now. There's a bunch of people who know. Um, I don't have energy on that. Just slight. It's bubbling. It's not quite. I didn't say it anywhere near right. I, I would say, okay, there's a bunch of people who are suspicious. You know, a little more rise in energy. There's some people who are suspicious who also know where the cabin is. They've had good times there with Chad.
and Tammy. And I hear an actor Sosa again. I'm, I, he must have been there. Because the one like Christopher Parrott, I haven't heard him. He keeps not being in it, surprisingly enough. And um, that's the second time, I think, earlier. I may not have even said it because I just, it could be brain garbage. Because um, I've been looking those people up. So, you know, it still could be brain garbage. But I'm not getting the other people I looked up. And I am, it's the second time I got Hector Sosa at that place. And I got chills on my legs now. So he has been there. Hector Sosa has been there. For sure. I have chills. Uh, chills just going, went, still going a little waves down my legs. Hector Sosa has been at this cabin. I did not get it, surprisingly, on uh, uh, Christopher Parrott. I don't want to go down the list there. Because you know what? He could have been, and they sometimes they'll pull the energy when they want me to stop a line of, like I start wondering too much or trying to think. They'll they'll pull out the energy no matter what we're doing. So so them doing that, which sometimes I t often I I'll take for no when we're on a roll. So that's why you have to listen to me when I said, oh no, don't pay attention, stuff like that, because I know what I'm talking about <laughs> on all this energy stuff and and also. That's my alarm, I think. I think what I'm going to do is like 30 more minutes.